First up, we're heading to the Nippada Shonyudo. What does all that Japanese mean? Well, let me give you some clues. What is the connection with this and this item? That's right, we're going on a grand adventure. Let us visit the Nippada Limestone Cave. Who would have thought there'd be something so wondrous and so mystical lying right outside the heart of Tokyo? To be exact, it's two and a half hours northwest of Shinjuku Station. So it's a fair bit of a ride, but you are rewarded with beautiful vistas of mountains, rivers, and farms. You'll also make your way through quaint and cute train stations like this one. Be sure to take a leap of faith when you get off on Okutama Station. And we arrive to the entrance of the cave. The cave is quite remarkable. It's 1200 years old. And the inside of the cave is a nice moderate 11 degrees Celsius throughout the whole year. The temperature doesn't fluctuate much. And there are a total of 280 meters that you can explore. This is the pièce de résistance, the largest, most cavernous part of the cave. You'll also see Buddhist statues and religious monuments dotted through different parts of the caves. And those are dedicated to the monks who spent their years of their lives training here to reach enlightenment. To be honest, when I first made my way into the cave, I took really small measured steps and just made my way through slowly because it's pretty dark, it's a little bit slippery, and most of all, you can't blame me for being a little bit nervous. Especially when you get to parts of the caves that are labeled the Valley of Hell or the Mountain of Death. Look at this part. This is not for the faint of heart, folks. This part is almost a vertical climb. You have to hold on to the railings to make your way up. What makes it more difficult is that there is dripping water everywhere and uh, so you got to be really careful or it's a long way down. It takes 100 years to grow just one centimeter of stalactites. There I am again, huffing and puffing my way up and down. Before you go caving, here are some tips that I would recommend. Remember, it takes two and a half hours one way to get to the cave. So that is two hours on the train, 20 minutes on the bus, not including the potential 15, 20 minutes that you have to wait for the bus. Be prepared to spend a whole day to get there, to explore the cave and to get back. The cave is 800 meters in depth and currently 280 meters are available for exploration. Don't go about it quickly. You'll need a good solid 40 minutes. Be sure to note down the bus schedule. You can get some information about it from the bus drivers themselves who are super helpful despite not knowing a word of English. They'll guide you on the way. You can get to the visitor center at Okutama Station to pick up a map of the area, get more information about the cave itself, and receive a coupon for 100 yen discount per person. This cave adventure is pretty low risk and you don't need a whole lot of supplies with you. I would recommend having a jacket and sturdy shoes, definitely a nice camera that can take photos in the dark, but you don't need a flashlight or anything like that. All of the pathways are very well illuminated. 
Remember that steep, practically vertical climb? Well, it's vertical both up and then there's a down portion. So if you have family members who aren't able-bodied enough, then have them wait in a location where you can find them again. The, the cave isn't a maze. It's built so then the paths are circular and you go back to the same place to get back to the main entrance. So you won't lose anybody on the way. It's epic meal time! Now we are in the middle of nowhere. There aren't any convenience stores, grocery stores, or easy restaurants around. The best thing to do is to just bring your own picnic with you. You can buy these sorts of bento boxes at convenience stores, but preferably supermarkets. It's just a lot better made at a supermarket. Here we have teriyaki chicken with a good helping of rice and a few pickled toppings on the side. Conversely, you can also pick up onigiris, which are rice balls with some sort of filling inside. There is only one onigiri that I recommend though, and that would be the mayonnaise tuna. Every one of the other ones that I've tried kind of have kind of a weird filling. Onigiris are easy. They don't need to be refrigerated for the day. They don't need heating up. They are like the Japanese version of protein bars. Oh hi! I didn't see you there. Oh I'm just uh, taking another look at this map um, of the hiking trails around Mount Takal. A couple of hours outside of Tokyo but uh, much more easier to access by train than the limestone caves. There are a total of six trails in total, so you can go up one and then come back down a different trail. And each trail has its own distinctive features like waterfalls, small suspension bridges, temples. What is the level of difficulty of the hike, you ask? Well, it depends on a variety of things. I, for one, didn't choose to take the cable car up. I wanted the full hiking experience, of course, but I think I was regretting my decision 20 minutes in. It was tough for your average super casual hiker like me. It is a continuous slope all the way up. You're rewarded halfway through with many restaurants selling delicious snacks, cold soba, and other meals to fill your energy gauge. What was disappointing is actually when I got to the very top. You expect spectacular scenery, and what's advertised is that you get to see distant mountains too. But what I really got was this. Trees blocking our view. And everybody else was so disappointed too. I heard many sighs and... ne. When you get to the very top though, a beautiful 12,000-year-old temple lies in the wake. This is called the Takao-san Yakuoin Yukiji, and it's an important cultural asset. All right, it's late afternoon. I'm pooped. Let's take that cable car down. Be sure to try to get a good spot in the front of the line so then you can grab a good seat. Here we go! It's not a very long ride, but it's quite fun. In total, it took 10 minutes to get back to where I started. It's epic meal time! This was a particularly special meal for me because it's the first time I've, re I've eaten a donburi this way. 
what you do is you've got a kettle of a type of soup that you pour in with your rice and salmon topping. Thank you for watching another episode of Walk With Me Tokyo. Next time I see you, we'll be back into the sprawls of the city.